2D lighting effects are a great way to take the graphics in your game to the next level. It's used to great effect in games such as Hollow Knight and Terraria and I've been wanting to learn the secrets to how 2D lighting works for a long time. In this video, I'll be spending a week of my time trying to write my own 2D lighting system with Bevy and the Rust programming language. For those of you who don't know, Bevy is a Rust powered game engine which is efficient and ECS based. The games I've made with Bevy thus far have tended to be very flat and honestly not too visually appealing, which is why I'm embarking on this journey in the first place. Anyways, enough talking, let's hop right into the video. Our first step is to create a demo scene, which I will start doing by making a player sprite. Nothing really special here, but I am pretty proud of the fact that I can actually make pixel art quickly now without it looking like complete hot garbage. Then I made a simple tile set and using the tiled tile map editor, which I've been using a lot for my projects recently, I created created the actual demo scene which we can now spawn our player into. This walk animation looks kind of goofy in game which I did not expect but anyways with all of this boilerplate out of the way we can now actually get into the lighting system itself and how that was created. We've got two approaches to lighting that we can take. The first approach is to use a simple fragment shader for our lighting just like this water effect that I've already made is using. Basically we can first render our scene normally into a texture then modify the pixels in this texture for lighting with the fragment shader. Obviously the fragment shader on screen right now just displaces some UVs to make a water distortion effect and is in no way related to lighting. The downside of this approach is that it is both inefficient and we can only really implement simple point lights with this system due to the limited approach that fragment shaders give us. So I opted for a second approach, using compute shaders for our lighting system. I've been using compute shaders quite a bit recently so I'm more comfortable with them and this is also what I believe is the objectively better approach. We can create point lights and render them more efficiently than a fragment shader can, and we can also create more advanced lights like this sunlight coming in through the window, which we can control to be physically accurate. I think it's probably best if I first explain how computators work though. First, data is initially passed in from the CPU in the form of storage buffers or textures. Then we can call functions on the GPU to update this data, and this data can then be used for rendering, which is how we can actually perceive the changes done by our computators, as the data is usually never read back to the CPU for efficiency's sake. But let's go into more detail with how our data is updated. I feel like a broken record explaining computators at this point, but it pretty much has to be done to understand the rest of this video. Let's say we are trying to write a computator task, which clears the texture by painting the entire thing black. This is how the shader looks, and this is how we dispatch the shader. In our shader, we grab a pixel location by accessing the x and y values of a global invocation ID variable. We then paint this pixel location black. So how does this invocation ID variable correspond to a pixel location? Well, this is because of the way we dispatch our shader. Let's take a look at our dispatch call. We dispatch workgroups based on the width and height of our screen divided by 8, and 8 is the width and height of our workgroup. Let's simplify this scenario a bit. Say our screen is 8 by 8 pixels. If we make our workgroup size 2 by 2, we would need to dispatch 4 by 4 or 16 workgroups to completely clear our screen. We can also draw the global invocation ID for each thread in our workgroups, and it's visually clear to see that this ID corresponds to a pixel location. Now that was a really quick breakdown of computators, so it's probably best if you you do your own research to get a deeper understanding past this simple explanation. Alright, so how would we write a point light system with compute shaders? Let me introduce the idea of a light mask. I think the best way to explain a light mask would be to show it visually. This is a light mask and this is what applying the light mask does. Yeah, it should be really self-explanatory. Basically, a light mask is a separate texture that we generate. We then add the color values of this texture to our base image in order to simulate lighting. So a point light system would consist of constructing this light mask each frame in order to create lighting. Let's go over the shaders which allow for this system to happen. The first thing we do every frame is clear the light mask so that we can generate a new one. Of course, I've already gone over how this clear function works, so I don't think we really need to go into more detail. To draw a point light onto the light mask, we have another compute shader task which is executed for every point light that we want to draw. When we dispatch this task on the CPU, we basically dispatch workgroups so that the area where our point light affects is what our compute shader will cover. So we just divide the maximum size of the point light by our workgroups size which is 8. In the actual function, we first calculate the bottom left corner of the point light by transforming from world space to screen space. I think we can just use matrix functions for this but this was the most intuitive for me at the moment and since this is a 2D lighting system, I don't think we are ever going to lose much performance for just using simple operation. Now we just need to apply the light mask to our actual render texture which is actually pretty simple. This task is dispatched the same way our clear task is dispatched, so it basically affects the entire screen texture. We first grab the color of the current pixel from both our light 
lighting mask and our render texture. Then we find the color of the ambient light in the area, so basically how dark we would want our lighting mask to be without any light shining at all. Next we just add the lighting mask to our render texture and subtract the ambient darkness to get the final color which we will store in the texture. After making everything configurable in the tiled editor, where we can now control the size of the light, the intensity of the light, and other parameters such as the color of the light, we have successfully created a prototype 2D point lighting system. So I could technically just end the video right now, but point lights are honestly just too simple and could be done even without compu shaders. If we take a look at the code again, all we did was use a smooth step function to calculate the intensity of lighting at a pixel. Not really much interactability there. The next type of light I would like to create are what I like to call sprite lights. Sprite lights are basically spotlights but in the shape of a sprite of our choosing. They interact physically with the terrain and the player which is something that can only be efficiently accomplished with compu shaders. So let's break down how they work. Sprite lights actually have their own lighting mask because I want to have more control over their lighting values. This lighting mask texture is temporary because the values are cleared for each sprite light and every time we finish applying a sprite light the value of the lighting mask is added to the main lighting mask which our point lights use as well. The actual function for applying the sprite light to the lighting mask is a bit convoluted, but I'll explain it in simple terms. We basically loop over every pixel in a sprite and draw a line in the direction of our sprite light. Now I couldn't be bothered to actually look up a line drawing algorithm, so I sort of just intuitioned up a simple line drawing algorithm which only works if the direction of our line is in the first or fourth quadrant. But the system wasn't meant to be robust in the first place, and this is just a test to see if I could create a lighting system so I just wanted to get things done. Now, how did I make it so that the player and the terrain could stop these light rays like in the demo? Well, you would think that I passed in all the hitboxes and tile map data to the compu shader, but this is way over complicating what I actually did. I rendered the player and the tile map onto a separate image which I named Stop Light Mask. Then, whenever we draw a line in our sprite lighting shader, we just check to see if the location which we are trying to draw at is transparent or not. If it isn't transparent, we stop our line drawing algorithm. This shader code is honestly really bad, I wouldn't suggest trying to replicate it. You should find out an actual line drawing algorithm instead of coding off of intuition like I did. Anyway, the last step to our sprite lighting algorithm is to apply our temporary sprite lighting mask to the main lighting mask. This was really simple, we just need to add the values of our temporary mask to our main mask. Then I went into the tiled editor and also made the lights configurable in the editor and we can now have more interactable lights than our static point lights to the scene. So in the end, I was able to make a 2D lighting system. It was honestly a lot easier than I thought it would be. It might not be the most efficient or well designed, but it definitely does the job. I also might need to figure out a better way to make the player light, because it glows a bit too bright around other point lights for my liking. Maybe introducing a max brightness could help. Anyways, if you made it this far, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. It really helps motivate me to create more videos.